So you want to become a cloud engineer in 2025, but you don't know where to start. Which certification do you need? What role do you apply for? Back in 2020, I quit my job and landed a new one as a cloud engineer in just three months. But that was nearly five years ago and the cloud landscape has changed significantly since then. Now I run my own cloud consultancy and I work for myself. And if I was starting this journey again, here's the exact 10 step roadmap for 2025 that I would follow starting with number one, learning IT fundamentals that every cloud engineer needs to know. Here there are five main areas, starting with operating systems. Operating system is the foundation of any computer, the software that manages everything. Think of how you use Mac OS or Windows on your computer. That's the operating system at work. In the cloud, the Linux operating system dominates. Most cloud servers run Linux, so you need to learn how to use Linux through typing commands. You also need to be writing small programs, which we call scripts, which let you automate repetitive tasks that would otherwise eat up a lot of your time. Now, while Linux is our main focus, knowing Windows matters too, since most companies use both. So understanding them makes you more valuable. Then there is networking, how computers communicate with each other, which is crucial because cloud computing is all about connecting and sharing resources. Each computer on a network has its own address. We call it an IP address, similar to how houses have street addresses. Now networks need organizing. Websites need converting to IP addresses. Computers need rules for sending data between each other. You also need to learn about security too, things like firewalls that control what traffic and enters your network and VPNs that create private and protected connections. Programming comes next because automation is what makes cloud systems efficient and scalable. Now, don't worry, you do not need to become a fully fledged software engineer, but understanding the basics, the fundamentals of code, especially in Python, makes your life as a cloud engineer so much easier. So you need to learn it. Next up is databases, the backbone of storing and retrieving information that every modern application needs. You wanna start with SQL, which handles data in tables, like a highly capable Excel spreadsheet. Then you want to start exploring no SQL databases, which is built for less structured information because different data needs different databases. Some fits neatly into rows and columns and some just simply don't. Finally, there's virtualization and containers. Virtualization creates multiple virtual computers from one physical machine. This makes cloud computing possible. Containers package everything into one single unit. So moving applications between systems becomes more straightforward and nothing breaks. Understanding these fundamentals makes learning specific cloud platforms like AWS much easier because you'll know exactly what is happening underneath. Oh, and by the way, I've released my beginner's guide to cloud computing. It's free right now and it's linked in the description below. Step number two is choosing your cloud platform. The cloud computing world is dominated by three major players, each running massive networks of data centers around the globe. You've got Amazon Web Services, AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud, GCP. While each of these has its own strengths, I recommend AWS for beginners, and here is why. Firstly, AWS leads the market by a wide margin. This means more job opportunities and more resources for learning. Secondly, AWS offers an extensive free tier, so you can experiment with real servers, real databases, and real storage without spending a dime. You wanna build things and you wanna learn by doing. Now, the skills you learn on AWS do transfer to other platforms. So once you understand how AWS handles storage or databases, you'll be able to grasp how Azure and Google Cloud approach similar tasks. The concepts remain the same, just different names and different interfaces. Step three is mastering essential cloud concepts. Now with AWS as your platform, it's time to dive into step three, where we'll break down the five AWS services that are essential for every cloud engineer in 2025. Now EC2 is your starting point, Amazon's way of providing virtual computers in the cloud. Instead of spending thousands on physical servers that sit idle, you rent computing power when you need it. If you need a server for a month, for an hour, for a year, you can just spin it up on AWS. You can turn it off and you can shut it down when you are done. Now, these virtual machines can handle everything from running websites to processing complex data. You'll learn to set them up, control the access through security groups, and even make them automatically scale up or down based on the demand. S3 solves the storage problem by giving you essentially unlimited space in the cloud. You create something called buckets. Think of them as super powered folders that can store anything from small documents to massive video libraries. A single bucket can hold more data 
data that you could fit on thousands of hard drives. Now, companies like Netflix use S3 to store their entire video library and countless websites use S3 to store their images and files right there. Now you can make these files public or private and access them from anywhere in the world. And therefore you need to know about IAM, Identity and Access Management. It's how you control who can do what in your AWS account. Identity and Access Management lets you create users and group them logically like developers or admins and set precise permissions. If you want the marketing team to upload files but not delete them, if you need developers to access test servers and not production, you control all of this via IAM, Identity and Access Management. It's crucial because one misconfigured permission could really expose all sensitive information VPC gives you your own private section of Amazon's cloud. Imagine getting your own floor in a massive office building with complete control over who comes and who goes. You decide how you structure your network, what can connect to what, and how everything communicates in your network. Banks use VPCs to keep financial data secure. Gaming companies use them to keep player data separate from admin systems. It's basically your private space in the cloud. Then we have Amazon Bedrock, which represents the future of cloud computing. It's Amazon's way of making AI accessible to everyone. Instead of needing a team of AI experts and massive computing resources, you can tap into the pre-built AI models on Bedrock. So if you want to add a chatbot to your customer service, if you want to analyze thousands of documents automatically, Bedrock lets you do this by making AI as easy to use as possible, just like any other cloud service. Now, while the technical details might seem a little bit overwhelming, you want to focus first on understanding why you would use each service and what for. The how becomes much easier once you understand the why. Now let's move on to step number four. It's time to build hands-on projects. So you get really comfortable with AWS. First, you wanna build a portfolio website. This is a great starting project because you actually end up with something useful. Your own website to show off your work. You'll use S3 to host it, which is simpler than you might think. You'll create your website files, your HTML, your CSS, and your JavaScript and put them in an S3 bucket and tell S3 to serve these files as a website. Now, along the way, you can learn how to handle files in S3. You can set up permissions so people can view your site and even set up versioning so you can keep track of the changes that you make. The second project is a little bit more tricky, a system for tracking tasks. You can use Easy2 to run your application, which can be built in either Python or Node.js or whatever language you're comfortable with. And then you can connect it to your database using Amazon RDS. This is very valuable because it teaches you how different AWS services talk to each other. You'll learn how to set up a server connected to a database and how to route the connection between them to make sure everything stays running smoothly. The third project brings security in the picture, an app for sharing images. You can store the images in S3, but the interesting part here is controlling who can do what with them. Using IAM, you can set up rules so that only certain users can upload or delete images, while others might only be able to view them. This teaches you real world security practices, something that's crucial in any cloud role. Now, the great thing about these projects is that each one teaches you different skills, but they're all manageable for beginners. Remember, it's totally normal to hit roadblocks while building these projects. And I've had loads of these roadblocks myself. That's actually a good thing because solving those problems is where the real learning happens. Now, if you feel like securing your code takes too much time, there's a better way. With Sneak, securing your code and projects is simple, saving you valuable time. Just connect Sneak to your environment and it'll automatically scan for vulnerabilities in real time, whether you're working in your IDE, CLI, or GitHub repos. You get instant feedback on any issues and suggestions to help you patch things up right where you are coding. And if you are new to security, Sneak has great resources to help you get up to speed like Sneak Learn. It's completely free and it has lessons designed to teach you security concepts. You can even learn based on issues in your code so you understand exactly how to fix and avoid vulnerabilities in the future. You can try Sneak in your own apps for free by going to sneak.co slash Sleiman, link in the description and thanks to Sneak for sponsoring today's video. So after building your first project, it's time to get certified as your next logical step, which is step number five. And by the way, a common mistake that beginners make is thinking that certifications alone will land you a job. That is not the case. Employers aren't really looking for certifications on your resume. Instead, I want you to view cloud certifications as consolidating your learning and helping you understand the theory. So you want to start with the cloud practitioner, where you'll learn how cloud services actually work together. The next one is the Solution Architect Associate. It's how these 
three services work together to build solutions. Now don't think about memorizing each service and each feature. Focus instead on understanding why you would choose one service over another. And there's plenty of practice questions and exams online, so be sure to use them to help you prepare for the main exams. Step number six is essential cloud tools. And there are two that are so important for you to learn. First up is infrastructure as code, IAC, specifically with Terraform. Cloud engineers use Terraform to build and manage AWS resources through code instead of clicking buttons via the console. Do not get used to using the AWS console to spin up infrastructure. Whoever teaches you to use the AWS console to build infrastructure manually is not someone you want to learn from. You want to build everything through code because that's what happens in the real world. It's, yes, it's important to learn about the AWS console and how to navigate it and how to track things and how to monitor things and how to make sure your infrastructure that you've deployed via code is actually there. I use the AWS console for validating. I do not use the console to spin up any sort of project or any sort of infrastructure. So please, 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 please do not use the console to learn how to build projects. Use it to get familiar with the services or what parameters that they need, but really you need to use IAC. Any project that teaches you how to use a console, it's a red flag. Now with IAC, you wanna write a few lines of code and your whole infrastructure just spins up the same way every time. So your databases, servers, networks are consistent and repeatable. And when something breaks, you can track down exactly what changed and fixed it through versioning. Next is understanding CI and CD pipelines. The pipeline that moves your code from development to production. Your code lives in GitHub where every change is tracked. When you push new code changes, you can add GitHub actions to kicking automatically. Picture it as a conveyor belt. Your code starts at one end, gets built into an application and runs through automatic tests, security checks. And if everything passes, it deploys to production to AWS. You can start with the basics, getting automated builds and tests working properly. And then as you're learning, you can add more complexity. These tools work hand in hand. IAC will handle your infrastructure while CICD moves your code between environments. Step number seven is advanced AWS services. Now you're ready to tackle four advanced AWS services. And the first one is AWS Lambda, which completely changes how we run code in the cloud. There are no servers to manage, no infrastructure to maintain, and you simply write the code and AWS AWS will handle everything else for you. So if you need something to happen when a file uploads, then Lambda does this automatically. The cost model is what's beautiful about serverless functions. It's so simple. You only pay for the exact millisecond that your code runs. Then we have API Gateway. Think of it as a smart receptionist who knows precisely how to route every message between different parts of your system. Then we have DynamoDB, which brings flexibility to data storage, which is a no SQL database. Now, unlike traditional databases that demand rigid structure, DynamoDB will adapt to your data. It handles massive amounts of requests simultaneously whilst maintaining lightning fast speed. With DynamoDB, you're master storing data, creating efficient search patterns, and ensuring your application can access information instantly. The next service focuses on AI infrastructure. Now you've already got some experience with Bedrock at this point, so you also need to learn SageMaker. SageMaker basically just manages your AI models. You'll learn to set up GPU-powered computers, deploy your AI models, and manage different versions. It's a serverless way of managing your AI infrastructure. Step number eight is complex project building. And project number one is an event-driven notification system. Think of this as building your own alert system, like getting a text when your food delivery is close. Here you'll combine Lambda, DynamoDB and SNS to create something users actually need. When important information changes, your system will tell the right people immediately. So you want to start setting up your infrastructure with Terraform, then build the core pieces and services one at a time. Firstly, you want to create a Lambda function that watches for changes in your database. Next, you want to set up SNS to send notifications and finally connect them together. Now, you obviously want to test as you go to make your life easier and you will start simple. Maybe send a notification when someone adds something new to your database. Once that's working, you can add more features like updates and deletions. Project number two is a book recommendation engine. This project shows you how to add AI to real applications. You're essentially building a simplified versions of Amazon's Readers Also Bought feature for books. This system is straightforward. It 
watches, what books people read, what they rate highly, and how long they spend reading. Now, all of this information will go into DynamoDB. So when someone wants a recommendation, the Lambda function will package up its reading history and ask Bedrock for queries and suggestions. Amazon Bedrock will then analyze the patterns and suggest books with similar writing styles, themes, and complexity levels. And of course, you want to make this project better over time. For example, you want to analyze book descriptions to find similar styles, generate custom summaries for readers, or look at reviews to understand what people like about different books. Now, each new feature makes the recommendations more useful. Now, both of these projects will give you hands-on experience with services that companies actually use. Exactly the kind of experience that will get you hired in 2025. And if you like the sound of these projects, but you don't know how to start building them, then check out my Cloud Engineer Academy. You will get plenty of hands-on experience from day one. You'll be building projects and access to a private Discord with over 300 cloud students worldwide. I also run monthly live workshops as part of the package. For example, recently we had an AI models workshop and how to deploy these to AWS. And by the way, all of these calls are recorded so you can revisit them whenever you like. And if you're interested, go check out the link in the description. The next step is building your online presence. You should actually start this step right at the beginning of your journey. Number one, your LinkedIn profile file setup. First, you want to craft that headline, but know it will evolve. Start with something simple like aspiring AWS cloud engineer, and then watch it grow into an AWS certified cloud engineer building scalable cloud solutions. As you start to develop your skills, your headline should tell your current story. Number two, writing your summary. This is where you share your complete journey. Tell people what pulled you into learning cloud engineering and how you're putting things into practice. Be specific about the certifications and the projects that you're learning and building, but also be real about the learning process. Share those moments when things break and how you figured out to fix them. Next, you wanna showcase your projects and document everything that you're building. The first static website in S3, write about it. When you're creating complex systems with Lambda and DynoDB, you wanna share those as well. Break down your thought process. Explain which AWS services you picked and why you picked them. Now, most importantly, share what went wrong and how you fixed it. You also need to use the projects section. Think of this as your living portfolio. Start with those projects early and show how they become more sophisticated. And finally, get those recommendations. This becomes much easier when you've been sharing your journey openly. Connect with people who watch your current progress, people that know you well and are active on LinkedIn. Their recommendations can carry a lot more weight than you think because they would have seen your growth firsthand because you've been building in public. Public. The trick here is starting early. Don't wait until you are ready. Share your learning process from the very beginning. Now, let me talk you through the final step, landing your first cloud job. After all of this learning and building, you are ready to start applying. Firstly, you want to target the right entry level roles. Start looking for positions like cloud engineer, junior cloud engineer, cloud support associate, or even technical support engineer, or any cloud adjacent roles like help desk or DevOps or platform engineer. These roles want someone who understands the fundamentals of IT setting up servers, managing permissions, monitoring resources. They are perfect starting points because you apply what you are learning, what you have learned, and while you're growing your skills. And here is something for 2025. As you get comfortable with cloud infrastructure and AI services, new roles are emerging. Cloud AI infrastructure engineer, MLOps engineer, AI platform engineer, cloud AI engineer, we're going to see more AI based titles in these tech roles. Starting with traditional cloud roles will give you a solid foundation to move later on into AI focused roles. Also, your resume needs to tell a clear story. Don't just list technologies, show how you've used them to solve problems. Study job descriptions carefully, look at what they need and create different versions of your resume for different types of roles. Make sure you connect with people in the industry, join communities, go to networking events. These connections you make can lead to roles later on. You should even message recruiters because you have nothing to lose. Now, with interviews, they require specific preparation. You want to come with detailed examples from the projects that you've built. When they ask you about IAM, don't just describe what it is. Describe the permissions that you've used and the systems that you've built and secured. Walk through your problem-solving process because people care more about how you solve problems than exactly the technologies that you know. Most importantly, make sure you connect your technical knowledge to business value. Remember, landing your first cloud role will take time and persistence. Rome wasn't built in a day. Each application will make you better at explaining your skills. Each interview teaches you something new. Keep refining your approach based on your feedback because everyone in cloud computing started exactly where you are right now. And just remember, you become what you think about. And if you want to follow the same path that I took after completing this roadmap, then check out this video right here where I show you the exact cloud career path that will make you filthy rich.